So welcome away to another Behind the Team. Today we continue with our history of Uesugi Kenshin. Today we will continue with his wars with the Hojo and the Takeda. But mostly today I want to talk about Kenshin the man. This is because there's a lot of tidbits in Kenshin's life, which I feel if known would help a person understand the man more. So let's get into it. First, let's talk about the most famous relationship Kenshin had, the one with Takeda Shingen. Now it was not one of romantic sort. It is more of one of respect. In many cases, there was many trade of gifts between both of them. Shingen even giving Kenshin a precious sword he owed. And the most famous case of this respect is when other Aimyo blocked the salt shipments to Takeda lands. This was important as salt was the key to maintaining the armies due to the preservation of food. It was Kenshin who sent salt shipments to help Shingen noting that he felt that Shingen should be defeated through feet of arms than through salt. This respect between warlords from Kenshin hardly extended to many others, but that did not mean that they did not fight each other, as after the fourth battle of Kawakejima, Kenshin would face Shingen in that location and Kozuke before Shingen dies. And in fact, through the sources, it is said that when Kenshin found out that Shingen died, he wept. Now, of course, we hear a lot about the Uesugi fighting the Takeda. But in fact, the clan that would take up most of Kenshin's life are the Hojo. This is because Kenshin took the role of Kanto Kanre very seriously and resolved to return it to the Uesugi, fighting in Kozuke, Musashi, Shimosa, to no lasting effect. And the reason why is strangely this triangle of power of the Hojo, the Uesugi, and the Takeda Due to the fact that these three clans could not eliminate each other, this was what prevented these strong clans from expanding. Unlike, for example, the Oda, the case of this is whenever one of the clans got attacked by another, the weaker clan will call on the third party to come and help. Such as when Kenshin was requested by Hojo Ujiyasu when Shingen seized Odawara Castle. Now Kenshin would spend half his life involved in the politics of Echu. At first, Kenshin as a mediator between the two rival clans of Shina and Jinbo, in my opinion, obviously to get his first step into the land. But later, he sided with the Shina and took over the Jinbo clan. Decades later, he turned on the Shina and took over them too. Shina, Yasutane, being assassinated in 1576 by Kenshin's retainer, Kojima Motoshige. Now, moving on a lot of these interesting details about Kenshin himself. Kenshin is known as a great warlord, but one must remember his lands were also very well run. And for this, he was also known as a good administrator. But he definitely increased Echigo's economic strength. He encouraged trade, especially in Echigo's hemp trade. He built up Kasugayama Castle, to, and that led to the prosperous castle town around it. And in 1564, he revitalized the seaport of Kashiwazaki. He also reduced the tax burden on the merchants and gave special privileges to them so as to encourage trade in his domain. On religion, Kenshin was not only a Buddhist but also worshipped Bishamonten, the god of war. And he was so good at war that he was seen as the avatar of Bishamon on earth by many of his generals and retainers. In fact, the banner that Kenshin is most attributed with is the one with the character of B on it in honor of Bishamon. In many aspects, Kenshin was a very religious man and he did not have any children. He was not perfect. For his contemporaries write about how he indulged in alcohol which might have led to his deterioration of health in his older age. The last thing we'll talk about today is the rumor that has been adapted into animes, novels, and so on. Now this was mostly to the fact that Kenshin is described in sources as having fair skin, a thin figure, and his lack of interest in women, that actually he was a woman, like that of the case of Io Naotora, a female daimyo whose adopted son was the famed Iu Naomasa, who fought in the Battle of Sekigahara, one of the rare cases of a proven female becoming daimyo of a clan in the Sengoku Jidai. 
Malokov in the case of Kenshin, this is more of a conspiracy theory. So that was the details of Kenshin the man. Next time, we will end the series with the war with the Oda and Kenshin's death. Thank you very much. Till next word.